get my beautiful assistant to fetch it for me. Good idea. <laughs> All, right, chin chin. All right, I guess we'll uh, we'll get Cheers. started. Um, good to see some familiar faces. Uh, Tom, Tobias, and two ladies who I think I recognize from Knutsford normally here. <laughs> I think I saw you as well once on the uh, lunch in Liverpool. I think we did a regular Martin lunch. I think you ladies were there as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've been regulars to the weekend events. In, uh, yeah, yeah. So I can recognize the faces. Um, Steve Mulvey, welcome. Graham from uh, Louis Trias as well. Uh, Medric from Lalani, good to see you as well. I'll not see you, but we'll probably hear you at some point. <laughs> um, so tonight we're going to talk about uh, about Arvo. Uh, so Arvo is exclusive to, to cigars in the UK, uh, as you might know. Um, we started that relationship we were two and a half, three years ago, I think, um, with with Paul and, and Mitchell, um, and uh, since then we've uh, we've done quite a few things, including an Arvo Ocean selection. Um, but today we're going to talk about the uh, the Arvo Improvisation 2020 and 2019. Uh, the 2019 was very popular in the UK, and uh, 2020 has just been released, and has had great reviews uh, overall. So. Uh, so we're here to find out a little bit more about uh, Arvo, uh, maybe a bit about the background, about maybe Sam's relationship with Arvo in the past. <laughs> I think Arvo was a bit of a mentor to Sam. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the cigars and then Arvo in general. So if you have any questions, as usual, just put them in the chat box and uh, we'll, we'll ask them away or we'll, we'll get you to ask the question for us if your microphone works. Um, first of all, Sam, thank you again for joining us. No it's problem, pleasure. Um, I know you could be sitting in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um, I guess to start by, uh, again, for the people who don't know you, to, to do a quick introduction of yourself, um, what you do for Davidov, and um, your relationship maybe with, with Arvo. Yeah, so um, I'm within the company more than 11 years, uh, now actually working as a global brand ambassador uh, for the brand Davidov uh, mainly, and also... Um, Head of product development, meaning that I'm developing all the blends with our factories in Honduras and Dominican Republic. Um, and beside also with the quality of the cigars, so whenever I hear any complaints, which are only very few, but still I, I then clarify uh, with the factory or go behind the process what it can be. And um, so when I started in, uh, in March 2009, Basically, just after two weeks um, being in the office in Basel, and I was before in Paris, uh, I remember I came from Paris to Basel on a Sunday, and Monday I started working immediately for, for, for David or for, for Oettinger. And I had one of, so I was product manager for Switzerland, and one of my brands uh, was Arvo. And basically, I mean, two weeks in, and I had to do the Arvo tour, which was basically a tour with Arvo across Switzerland. Um, and, and basically having different events, uh, visiting retailers. And I was so new in the business, and it was like just after two weeks when I met Arvo, and, and, and he helped me a lot, you know, understanding a bit of the background of the cigars, the whole philosophy around it, you know, and um, yeah, it was an exciting time. Perfect. Um, as you said, you had, you had quite a bit of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you had quite a relationship with, with Arvo, because he was a bit of a mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, so how did that relationship come about, or what can you tell us about the man himself? So Arvo, if 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 you, if you look a little bit, let's say a little bit in his background, he was born uh, 1926 in 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 Beirut, uh, Lebanon, and he had uh, Armenian parents, and already, you know, in Arvo's life there were cigars and there was music. Of course, there was also women, but. We don't talk, I, I won't tell you a lot of the stories about this, but especially cigars and music. And um, even his father was already a, a musician. And uh, so that was always something that was um, a big part in his, in his life. And uh, that's why he was in, in, in 1947, he went from, from Iran, he went to, to New York to the, to the music school, uh, the Juilliard School of Music. Um, but it was funny, the story actually behind was he was playing piano in, in the Shah's uh, palace back in Iran and um, Arvo fell in love with the princess and the princess also had a kind of an eye on Arvo and, and the Shah noticed and said, my, my dear Arvo, I like you as a friend, but you know, 
I see what, what can happen. And he, he basically, he bought him the plane ticket to go to New York and, and, and to study at the music school. And um, yeah, and he was like, basically from the music, he came into cigars when he was visiting Switzerland. He had a friend in here in the early 80s and uh, he had lunch and, um, uh, sorry, dinner. And after dinner, he was enjoying a Cuban cigar. And he felt like the price quality of the Cuban cigar, how much he paid, was, was not right to him. And he said, look, if, if those people can do cigars, I can do cigars as well. And that's basically when his idea started to really create the cigars and go within the cigar industry. And um, so back in 1988, um, we sold the first uh, Avo cigars in our store in, in Madison Avenue in New York. And then in 95, we bought basically the brand Arvo. And uh, so that was a little bit the background. Of course, Arvo was in, 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 um, in Puerto Rico playing piano, selling the cigars from the, his piano. And that's why he made kind of a name of himself and, um, and also explained a little bit his character. He was really a person and a gentleman. He had plenty of stories to tell. So he really, really uh, enjoyed his life. And... Um, yeah, he was just a great character. You know, whenever he entered the room, it was everybody just was like quiet or staring at him and, and, and having a, a perfect time. And I believe also um, that's why we have the slogan today with Arvo, savor every note. And that's exactly how Arvo was as a person. He was enjoying each second in, in life. He was enjoying a lot of cigars, uh, a good company, you know, and um, yeah, a great person. And so, how did you how did you first to how did you two first meet? Mm. So we actually met at the airport in Zurich. So I went to picking up, and um, and I was all nervous because I, I I was reading, of course, a lot about him. You know, all the the the, the articles, um, all the interviews. And then the man comes out. You know, he always had his straw hat, which was actually made in Mexico for him. And then he comes out with the hat and said, okay, that must be Avo. And um, so we were kind of, since the beginning, we were very close, you know. And, um, um, you know, I knew about cigars, I knew about tobacco. And I was smoking already since five years cigars. But, you know, he introduced me a bit about this philosophy of cigar uh, enjoyment, you know, like, like um, how to behave. Or, or, you know, he was always very relaxed with people, like how to talk to people, um, you know, all, all this, 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 just this aura was like kind of, of, of helping me a lot, you know, and I had a lot of questions and, and uh, so we have been on the tour. And uh, so at, the, at this time I didn't have a driving license. So you have to imagine, we have this big van, uh, the, um, the lady who was helping us on the events, she was driving, Alba was sitting next to her me at the back with the cigar roller and then all the rolling table, all the, the suitcases. And of course, the, the minute we entered the car, we were all three, we were already smoking cigars. And I can tell you, the, on, on, on the highway, it looked like a big Mississippi van, you know, all the smoke coming out from everywhere. People were like uh, uh, um, giving us signals with the light because they thought that we had like uh, kind of the engine was damaged, you know, so that, that was a funny it was a funny tour, you know, and, 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 and all this tour, you get very close to each other. And um, yeah, it was a great time. So kind of focusing on the, on the cigars now. So we've, uh, we've got the Avo 2019 improvisation and the Avo 2020 improvisation. Um, I guess the first question would be, um, what does the Avo improvisation line stand for? Because they come out year after year. So what, what was the thought behind it? So, um, yeah, so the first Arvo Limited Edition was launched in 2003 um, to, to celebra celebrate Arvo's um, um, 75th birthday. And basically then, you know, every year there was like a, another limited edition called um, either it's the year or the 80s anniversary or it was uh, the Compagnio in 2009 when I started um, in, the, in the company with La Trompeta. And we thought of let's do like an angle of limited edition and call it improvisation. Because you know, improv improvisation in, in music to improvise is also a little bit in, in the blending of a cigar, you know. Sometimes you need to improvise and you just create a blend that you would never thought of doing. And so we like the name um, improvisation and since 2015 all the limited editions are under this pillar 
uh, called uh, improvisation. And um, so then also we had um, uh, the 2019 one and the 2021, and then we continue with 2021, you know, and to see how we continue with, with, with the limited editions. But as you mentioned, Roy, they're very well um, appreciated. And um, um, I don't know how it is in the UK, but I can tell you in Switzerland, um, I had also an Arvo Siga club that I opened. So I met a lot of Arvo aficionados. And what everybody loved in Siga was this creaminess, you know, not being too strong, but having this, this, this harmony in the blend. And um, so we had some limited edition, a little bit stronger. And people were saying, ah, you know, it's not so, so much of my taste. And that's why if you look at the 2019 one and, and even now the 2020, it's such a, like a deep creaminess, you know, it's like, it, it's just fantastic. I, I really enjoy the cigar. That's very good. Uh, I think that, yeah, it's that the 2019 was very popular here. And I think it's also due to, um, due to the price point, I guess, okay. of even for, for limited edition and for, for tourist size was really reasonably priced. Um, I think that opened up the, the market for people to to really discover Arvo in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. Because normally, if you look at Daft or Limited Edition, for example, they're at a higher price point than than Arvo, even Camacho in that in that sense. Um, so that case was really good. I remember, yeah, we we even brought in more boxes of the nineteen because they were with their okay. So, what can you tell us about the blend of the two thousand nineteen to start with? So the 2019 was almost a poor, so a poor called 100% tobacco from one country. I say almost because we have a kind of 11.25% of Peruvian tobacco. I know Mitchell is, is not here, but I know he's very much, I mean, it's his tobacco basically. And um, Peruvian tobacco, very nice sweetness, very nice spicy note to it, very in interesting in the blend, giving you like little touch, you know. And if you look at the 2019 blend, you have mainly, um, uh, so filler tobaccos, you have uh, four different uh, Dominican uh, tobaccos, uh, Yamasa, um, uh, uh, Seco, Ligero, 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 and Ligero. So basically, if you look at the blend from, from, um, uh, from on the paper, you would think, okay, it's a quite strong blend. But having the um, uh, San Vicente uh, binder, and then also, again, Dominican wrapper is bringing it a little bit down the intensity. Um, but, but what I very much like about it, you know, you have that this kind of earthy, earthy notes, you know, you have like this, this, this uh, cedar woods, um, sweetness in it. And I think it, it's kind of balanced, creamy, caramel, you know, but also some spiciness in it. So I think it's a very, very diverse blend, you know, with a lot of different flavors. And the fact that the, that the cigar is not too strong, you can filter out these flavors easily. And I think that is the, one of the challenges of blending, you know, um, because doing a strong cigar, everybody can do it, you know, but doing a cigar that is like quite medium strong and very flavorful, that's kind of the challenge. So how did you start um, the blending process? Because I assume you were involved in creating the blend mm -hmm. for this cigar. Um, and we know that it normally takes a while. So normally when you come up for, with, with an Arvo cigar, what's kind of the, the thought behind it? So of course, when, when Arvo was, was alive, he was very much involved in the blending part. And also there, we knew that, so basically Arvo's palette is the same than, than, than Arvo, uh, than the, the Arvo smoker's palette, you know, harmony, balance, creaminess, not too strong, but very flavorful. Um, you have to imagine that, um, Having different brands like Davidoff or Camacho, Griffins, Arvo, we need to focus on the brand and using different kind of tobaccos for each brand. Meaning can be different zones, uh, can be different grades of the leaves, can be just different varieties of tobacco. Um, so always important that we keep an, an, a signature of each brand in the cigar. And how we did it with limited edition, it's just like we, we're, pushing, we're pushing a little bit further. We try some some new tobaccos, for example, the Peru Peruvian one in 2019, which we don't have in any of the lines of Arvo, but always focusing on this balance, you know, this balance is harmony. And uh, especially 2019, um, we had a blend in mind um, that we basically took as a base, but we changed it. So basically, we, 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 we put some different, um, some different other tobaccos in it, and just make it unique, you know. For us, limited edition is really limited edition. So we, we produce a certain amount of cigars and that's it. 
Um, and um, so, for example, for the 2019 one, we had a an, an, an total of uh, 71,000 cigars, um, which is a lot for a limited edition. And um, yeah, so th that is kind of blending wise, always think of, of, of being in line with the Avo brand, but pushing it a bit further for limited editions. Also using some, some more aged tobaccos um, um, to give also this little bit of elegance in the blend. And um, yeah, and for the 2019 one, we had one box press version for the US and we had a non box press version for <laughs> and rest of the world. So when you um, when you do the uh, the blending, mm -hmm. we know Alpha really liked uh, liked his music, etc. Mm -hmm. So how much is the influence? How much is the music an influence to to the blending? So are you trying to create a certain tune as such? Sorry, are you trying to create a certain uh, tune? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, with a cigar. Yeah. You know? um, so this is this is an interesting topic, the music one. So. Um, Avo was a musician, like he, he, his heart was, I think his heart was more music than cigars. You know, people ask me this, what, what, what was he more, you know, music or cigars? Because music was kind of his passion. And um, our master blender, Eladio Diaz, he's also very much into music. So basically, the inspiration of creating a blend sometimes comes from music. Um, he's listening to Vivaldi, the, the Four Seasons, you know, and he gets like, if the music is playing a little bit slower, you know, he thinks of more smoothness in, in, in the blend, you know, maybe, maybe to, uh, to back, uh, the, the grade a little bit more down, uh, if it gets a little bit more dramatic, you know, with something more strong in the cigar. So this, this music is influencing a lot in creating a blend. And lately I had an interesting uh, tasting that was focused on, on music. So we were, we were enjoying a cigar and, and listening to classical music very softly. And you can feel that the cigar is turning smoother just by listening to music. On the other hand, if you, if you listen a little bit to opera or a little bit like, you know, like, 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 like um, how can I say, like, like higher voices, you know, the, the cigar is changing. And I really didn't believe it, you know, but, but I really... Using the different senses. Yes, exactly. I really recommend you enjoy your cigar, maybe your favorite cigar, and, and put on some, some classical music or put some, some tango, for example. Um, the tango was Arvo's favorite uh, music direction. And you can see the cigar is, is more changing in flavors, is, is becoming more, more um, um, vivid, you know, in a way. Yeah. And, and that is a very interesting uh, part, how the music is influencing basically the taste. I think it's uh, it's about the overall experience, I guess. You know, you, we always say that when you when you when you smoke a cigar, not to try to do it through your nose as well, because you pick up more flavors through your nose. I think when you combine the music side of it mm -hmm. next to it as well, you know, it, it adds a different dimension to yes. the overall experience. Even even the color, you know, there is experiments where people in a room they're eating an apple, and if you turn the lights in the room all red. People are saying that the, the apple was so much more mature, you know, so much sweeter. But if you change the color into blue, everybody was thinking the apple was too fresh, but it was the same apple, you know. And, and that's also how the color is influencing you. And, and I think that is a kind of what you said before, right? It's basically all the senses that can influence how you taste an, a, a certain, I don't know, cigar, a certain drink, a certain, uh, 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 yeah. Because I find it often when, when I smoke a cigar and you're, I do smoke a cigar by yourself, and, and you get a really different experience than when you smoke a cigar in a group of people, because yes. you know, it's, it's the, the environment you're in, which really impacts how you feel about that particular cigar at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think Tobias wants to make a comment. Unfortunately, it's a boring usual one that the suggestion <laughs> is always, you know, every time, come on. <laughs> you know, the suggestion when you're doing a tasting of anything, basically, cigars, whiskey, wine, you pick it. And if you say that, yeah, this tastes of uh, bananas, actually, this bourbon tastes of bananas, by the way, and then it will be bananas for everyone, even if it tastes of totally different stuff. So that kind of mood and suggestion. Plus, uh, yeah. company, company is always good. If you smoke it with your best friend, doesn't matter if it's a rubbish cigar, it will be better than a well-aged, top, nice cigar on your own in the rain. So, yeah, totally. Yeah, That's it. thank you. We, we had this, we had, yesterday we had the internal tasting panel in Basel uh, trying new blends for, for 2022. 
And um, so there was um, a lady from outside who was writing about how we taste cigars and so on. And she was asking the question, so if you are in a group, how much you influence each other? And as you say, Toby, correctly, you do influence. But on the other hand, um, if you tell me you, you taste banana, and I wouldn't have tasted if you wouldn't have mentioned it. So also for me, it's a new experience. And I'm learning from you, you know. So I think it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, if you mentioned, like, for example, any taste, there's a lot of people say, oh, yes, I have the same taste. But they are grateful because maybe they would never have detected the taste before without somebody telling it. On the other hand, you need to be careful that you're not too much influencing each other and always stay within your opinion because I'm always saying it's your palate who is, is telling you if you like something or if you don't like something. And, and, and that's very important. It's also to do with confidence, I think, because not, mm -hmm. not everybody is, is as confident to speak up about the things they taste. Because some, mm -hmm. somebody might say, let's use the banana example. So let's say we're in a tasting and I taste banana. You know, it wouldn't necessarily be the first thing you think about when you smoke a cigar. So a lot of people think, oh, actually, that, that, that's probably not right. So therefore, I won't say it. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and I think this confidence, or this, you know, it, confidence, I, I, it is confidence, but I think at the end, nobody is wrong by saying a flavor what, that he's tasting because at the end, every palate, is, every palate is different, you know. And I always encourage people uh, to say, look, tell me whatever you, you taste, you know. It's always an interesting component in it. And um, yeah. That's what Toby just said as well, you know, there's no real wrong to say, just to be honest. Yeah, um, exactly. And that, that's the same in, in, in wine tastings, you know, which, which I'm sure you did uh, back in the day in your hospitality time as well. You know, you, you would have people um, not be as confident to, to taste what they, or to, to say what they taste. And sometimes they come out with things and, okay, that's, it's their palate and that's what they associate it with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that's the same with cigars, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think Tom had a question a bit earlier on, uh, again, about music. Um, if, if Arvo influenced your taste in music? <laughs> um, so let me say that when I... So, so Arvo, he had, he had the CD. I don't know if you know the CD he, he, he composed. Yeah. And uh, there was one song, I think it was the second last one, called Seagull. And that was something that I really loved. And he was always playing it for, for me at the end of the event. So I knew, okay, it's over. But at the same time... It was a nice finish. And at, at this time, I didn't really make the, um, the correlation between music and cigars. But now, when I listen to the song, I can feel how it's like, it's bringing back the memories, you know? And, and it's bringing back the memories about the events, about Arvo. And it, it's kind of a little bit like um, nostalgic. You call this not nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. exactly, nostalgic. Uh, uh, and, and I think that is kind of influencing me when I listen, when I, when I join Arvo Cigar and I listen to music, it's more about the memories and rather than being on, 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 more, on, the, on the changing of, of the cigar itself. Okay. Um, so with the, um, with, the, with the packaging normally for Arvo, it's, it's either linked to, to music or they come up with something, mm -hmm. something else, like this year's as a, as, as a quite a funky packaging, but I remember that it used to be a record player at some point, yes. um, or yeah, so, so how normally uh, does Arvo come up with those ideas for? So we have to, um, so Arvo is the biggest brand, I mean, if you look at globally, Arvo is doing uh, um, best in the US, and that's why we have our US marketing team also working all in the projects, especially on packaging, and you can see, for example, the 2019 one was kind of, 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 um, uh, linked to the molds, you know, the molds where you press the, the cigar in, especially the, 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 the bulk of the yeah. bonds, right? And uh, so that was inspired by the molds. And then the 2021, we were thinking of, let's do something special, you know, do something in acrylic. Um, you can use it as a humidor afterwards and also to, you know, to, to emphasize on buying a box, you know, rather than just a single cigar. And um, so we always come up with new ideas, you know, and I think it's, it's interesting how, how whatever you can do in packaging, but still staying, I say, within, like, within the cigar industry in a way, you know, like not, not going too fancy. And um, yeah, so, so let's see what, what next year we come up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always I guess, uh, I, I guess it makes sense, you know, because you, 
I guess Davido is maybe a bit more classic in its packaging, mm. uh, and you can't maybe go too too, too overboard because that's maybe not what people expect. Uh, well, Camacho and Arvo, it can be a lot more creative in the, in the blending process as well as the the packaging process. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. First, with Arvo, you always kind of want to link it back to to music, I guess. And um, I don't know for for those who haven't seen this year's uh, this year's box. Yeah, this uh, this acrylic. It fits 16 cigars uh, with a middle layer. Um, and yeah, afterwards you can use it as a humidor, which which sounds mm -hmm. it. So it's uh, definitely a good purchase. A purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then, popping off to the uh, 2020 improvisation. So the 2021 um, was uh, inspired, I say inspired, by one of the older limited editions, uh, Arvo 77s, uh, inspired in a way that we were thinking of, that was such a lovely blend, uh, such a great cigar, and also the format, the 50 times six and a half Toro, with a nice 50 ring gauge, not being, I mean, you get a lot of 54s ring gauges, but 50 is a nice elegant one. And uh, so we had kind of an idea in mind that was also one of, of Arvo's favorite cigars. And um, of course, we have a lot of old tobacco on stock, but we didn't have, of course, this. I mean, we're talking about uh, 2005. And uh, so basically, um, what we did is um, we focus on the taste. And uh, so you have, if you look at the filler tobaccos, the average is five years. Um, of age, so five years of, of, of letting the, the tobacco age, getting mature, getting to its summit of, of taste. And um, you have mainly, um, you have all of the, the Dominican tobaccos in the filler. Then you have an Ecuadorian uh, a binder, which is actually um, called 151. So this is one of the hybrids that basically we're using as a, as a wrapper on, on, on Davido. <laughs> And here are some of the, let's say, the qualities that how to use the wrapper for David. We use it as a binder for, for the Arvo Improvisation 2020, and then a nice Ecuador Connecticut wrapper on it. And um, I think if, if you, if you because I'm now one third almost done, but you have this nice creaminess, you have this chocolate notes, a little bit of caramel. Um, I'm coming on the second third, it's getting a bit more nutty, I would say, um, woody. And, and also a little bit sweet. So again, here you, you can see the, the flavors are easily um, uh, detectable because the cigar is not too strong. And, and that, that is the beauty of, of, of this blending uh, when we focus on Arvo. So you, you kind of mentioned that if that's a tobacco. So, so what kind of age of tobacco is being used in this cigar? So in, in this one, you have an average of five years of the filler tobaccos. So some five, uh, some six, some four. Uh, you have a, a four-year-old binder, and then the wrappers, because we're using them so fast, they, they go maximum uh, three years old, depending on, on, on the limited editions. Of course, for our, for Davido, sometimes we have 10-year-old, yeah. but normally, normally they are like three to four years old. And when you, um, let's say you would have a, a wrapper which is, is four years old and then three years old, um, what would be the main difference in flavor between the two? The flavors, basically, when you let the tobacco age, is, they're getting a little bit more subtle. I mean, if you, if you, if you talk as, as a wrapper in general, it's a very thin leaf. It's a very thin leaf, but it's very aromatic. Um, and then depending on the variety, like, for example, here on, on the 2020, it's, a, it's an Ecuador Connecticut uh, leaf. So Connecticut, having a, a little bitter taste on the lips, just by trying the cigar cold, not, not, not while you're smoking, you don't have the bitter note, but only by cold... Um, and, and basically, so to the wrapper leaf, it's already very aromatic because of the harvest, because of, of the drying, because of the sorting um, and special um, uh, treatment it gets. And, and basically, yes, you need to, to, to let it age for a minimum of two and a half, three years. But then after this, it's not changing that much. For it because why? Because it's not so thick in structure. If you look at the filler tobaccos, which are so much more thicker because it's more sun ground, um, more oiliness, they can change m much, or, or they, they do vary in taste um, um, more importantly than, than, for example, a wrapper. And um, so that's why for us, I mean, if a wrapper would change dramatically after five years, we would, of course, let them age more than five years. But we feel that three to four years is ideal for wrapper and is not changing much in, in terms of, 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 of flavor. 
And what is the impact of the different regions in Dominican Republic if you talk about filler tobacco? Mm -hmm. um, you have to imagine that uh, we have 15 microzones in, in Dominican Republic, and you can compare a little bit with the wine, you know. I'm, I'm saying like a Bordeaux wine, uh, mainly composed of three grapes. You go to Chateau Neuf du Pop, which has already 12 varieties of grapes, you know, a different uh, a terroir, a more stony. Um, so, you know, so all these micro climates, if you look at it, it, it's very much the climate that is basically determining how the tobacco will be tasting. Um, for example, we have one zone called uh, number 14, Damaragua, which gives um, birth to very sweet tobacco. You have other zones that are covered by wood, so there's more shadow and, and, the, and the leaves can grow bigger. Other ones have more humidity, um, which is so much more better than for, to, to get wrappers and binders, for example, in Yamasa, where we have over 80% of humidity, ideal to grow wrappers. And so has each zone has a different character. And you can really determine that, for example, the tobacco from Damaraga sweet, one from Rikome, where you have been, Roy, where we have our fermentation facilities, gives a little bit more strength to it, um, more peppery notes. And, and so we can, from all these zones, we can choose any tobacco variety, and it gives a different taste. Um, plus, we have over 80 uh, different seeds that we have developed ourselves. And having a different seed in, in, in each area is, again, changing the flavor. So we can, like, we were calculating that we can do up to 7 million different blends. Um, which is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. Um, and then the, the, the wrapper and the, uh, the binder, you said they come from Ecuador. So how do you source that tobacco? So we have, we have an exclusive um, uh, contract with um, our supplier in, in, in Ecuador. And also, so basically he's using our seeds, but growing Ecuador has the advantage. Ecuador is quite high where we have the plantations and you have the natural cloudiness meaning that you don't even have the shade ground. I don't know if you know the shade ground. Sometimes people, they have a, sh um, a people. Tobacco plants have like an, a net over it. And this net is basically... Um, Protected from the sun. Exactly. So the sun is not directly going to the plant. And, and you know, the plant is always looking for the sun to do the photosynthesis. And if you give it shadow, it's growing bigger. The, the leaves are getting more elastic, more shiny, which is perfect for wrappers. In Ecuador, because of the altitude and because of the natural cloudiness, you don't need to have a net over the plants. And that's why Ecuador is the country who is exporting the most wrappers. Yeah. Um, and we have especially zones for us. We have our supply exclusively for us. There's nobody else getting this tobacco. And we're working since years and years with him. And, and he knows our quality standards perfectly. And um, yeah, it's, it's working very well. Cool. Um, let's talk about pairing mm -hmm. for, for the 2019 and 2020. What would be your recommendation? Ooh, that's a good question. So, um, I don't know, I think Tom, Tom is enjoying the 2019 one. Um, as I remember me from the flavors a little bit more, you know, you have like this, this um, um, spiciness, but also this, this kind of sweetness. Um, I would say that a rum, uh, probably some rum maybe from Nicaragua that has not too much sweetness, but also like a kind of spicy note to it, would work very well with the 2019 one. Um, Florida Cana. Yeah, Florida Cana, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I personally de enjoy it very much. Um, looking looking at, at, um, um, at the, two t and the 2021, which you have this beautiful creaminess, um, caramel, um, going a little bit even, I, think, I would say even more smith, uh, uh, sweeter and more creamier, um, I, for example, I pair it with, with a nice uh, a white wine, a nice Chardonnay, which gives me a kind of a fruity note to it, which I very much enjoy. Um, but of course, you can also go uh, maybe a little bit more smooth in terms of a whiskey, maybe from, you know, from Speeside, not, not, too, not too smoky, not too, too earthy, but very elegant, a little bit malty, um, could be very nice. Um, ah, and Tom is mentioning a beer. I'm also a huge fan of, 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 of pairing cigars with beers. Um, just because, because, because you like drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> not only, but I think it's, it's nice because you get more this liquid, you know, and beer not being too strong, so you can still have the nice flavor of the cigars. It's not so much, let's say, changing your cigar yeah. that, for example, if you would pair it with a whiskey or a rum. 
And if you really had to go off track and uh, forget about the whiskies, the cognacs, and uh, and the rums, or more kind of liquor-wise, you know, something more sweeter, what would you what would you kind of say? Um, I was interesting. I, I did once a sake sake tasting, which I very much enjoyed with, with the cigars, especially the cigars a little bit more creamy. Um, we have also a port wine. I know that that UK is a huge port wine. Um, country or a lot of uh, port wine aficionados think port wine if it's not too sweet and not too sticky I think it's going very well with the cigar maybe a little bit more fresher um, a little bit more cooler in temperature um, I see here uh, Midori yeah. yeah exactly so you're going already this um, in, in this um, in this direction um, so I, I think I think kind of I'm saying when it comes to pairing identify the flavors in the cigar, identif identify the flavors of, of, your, of your drink, and just see how they, they come together. I'm sure that, that Toby has also um, a great recommendation when it comes to pairings, you know, especially, you know, if you think about cocktails, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, I would say. Um, but I'm always saying, if you have a nice old-fashioned that is not too strong, but you have like, this, this deep flavorous creaminess, it's also going very well. I tried it uh, last week for the first time, the 2020, and I also um, I had some sake in my fridge. But I had a Nigori sake, so the, the cloudy sake, mm -hmm. which is a bit more more sweeter. And I thought that worked really well. So that's 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 my tip. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so what else is in the pipeline for Avo? Uh, so we just finished the the blend for the 2021 <laughs> Avo improvisation which will be a very nice cigar, I can promise you. You will love it. Um, nicely, like more these roasted flavors, um, but also creaminess. Um, it's a nice format, a little bit longer though. So it will take up to one hour and a half to enjoy it. Um, uh, we are thinking of, of, of maybe introducing a new line from, from Arvo. And um, yeah. Uh, Avo is pretty much like, you know, exciting to, 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 to create new, new cigars, you know. But at the same time, if you look at a little bit at the portfolio, you have more like, I would say, all the, the synchro cigars are working very well. Whereas like, okay, classic XO uh, and the classic one is always working well, but the domain is a little bit out of focus. Although for me, it's a perfect cigar. And so it's always like trying to, 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 um, to balance what are like, a little bit the older lines versus the newer ones, you know, to make it like com com compelling for everybody. So I bet you want to tell us any more information about uh, the actual size of the 2021. So I guess I'll, I'll just move. <laughs> I'll just move on. <laughs> uh, I'll, probably have to wait. I'll probably have to wait a couple of days to to find out. Um, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's talk about the um, the Arvo um, Synchro um, Ritmo which we did for Orchin Selection. Okay, yes, yes. About that. So that's box pressed? So exactly, so that, 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 that one is box pressed. And um, so here we have always like this, how can I say? Box press is working very, very well in, 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 uh, in the US, you know, but, but here in, in, in Europe, we're kind of struggling. It, it, it's getting there, you know, but, but people still enjoying, um, uh, uh, let's say round shaped cigars, because sometimes I get the feedback that, that uh, 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 box press cigars are, are cheaper because they look a little bit cheaper, which I don't understand. Um, but um, yeah, so so basically the ritmo. Um, so we have to no. Let's continue. let's start with the Arvo Cinco de Nicaragua. The first it was actually the first box press cigar that we did in our company, and um, having this this smoothness in it, and. Um, being box pressed. So we learned from their box pressing and applied it to the David of the Nicaragua box press one. And uh, so then we had the Fogata one, which we increased a little bit the intensity of the, um, of the tobacco. And then we thought with the Ritmo, we thought, like, okay, let's do something really different. Let's think of how many, how many different tobacco origins we can fit into, into one cigar. That was basically, you know, also if you think about music, um, a, a lot of different music styles in a cigar. Different instruments. Yeah, exactly. Different instruments in a cigar. And um, so then here he came the idea of, of, the, of the ritmo, you know, with, 
with um, um, Nicaraguan tobacco, with Peruvian tobacco, Dominican tobacco, Mexican binder, and Ecuadorian wrapper. You know, so a lot of different, lot of different origins in one cigar, and playing on, on the focus of rit ritmo. Like each tobacco is giving you a, a different rhythm in the cigar, like you said, or maybe an instrument in orchestra. And that was kind of of the inspiration behind it. And I think it really, when you try the cigar, you get so much flavors. You get so much always changing. You know, I always say this cigar, you really have to focus on it and um, be concentrated. It's all about creating a harmony in mm -hmm. the end of the day, if it's regardless of music or, or, or cigars in that sense. Exactly. It took us a long time, actually, to do the blend because, you know, all these different tobacco origins, you have to imagine that each tobacco is having a voice in the blend. But you need to make sure that the voice is never getting too loud. And by, by really um, adjusting the percentage of each tobacco plus the grade of the leaves. So that was very, very challenging in the Ritmo, uh, in the Ritmo blend. So for those uh, on the call who, who don't really uh, know much about, about box pressing, for example, um, can you explain a little bit what the difference is between a box pressed and, and, and a normal cigar as such? Yeah. So... Um, I know we call it we call it box press, but actually it's it's more like mold press because we're pressing the cigar in molds. Um, but to start off, um, oh Tobias has, has to leave. Bye bye Toby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to start off, you know, so so the cigar is rolled round like normally, but you you're taking off a half a leaf in the filler, a uh, half a filler a tobacco leaf in the filler to make space for, for mold pressing. So basically you roll the cigar normally, like, like round, and then you place them in wooden trays with separations for um, a two hour one side, you turn it 180 degrees, two hours the other side, and you get this nice square um, um, shape. Now, because you're removing half a filler leaf, the impact of the wrapper is, is, is a little bit higher and uh, you get more intensity. Plus the draw is so much easier and uh, for me, the smoke that you get is also a little bit cooler. I think it's a nice experience if you try round and, and box press uh, versus each other. And um, also me, which I was never like a huge box press fan, but now over the time, I think it, it's quite an interesting cigar. And, and I, I, I enjoy more box press cigars than before. And um, so when we did first the Cinco Nicaragua box press, we had the challenge we were basically mold pressing the cigars, they were nicely square, and we left them overnight in inventory. And because of the humidity, they turned round again. So we, did, we said, like, oh no, we, everything we did was for, for basic for nothing. And now whenever you are in our, in our factory in, 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 in Villa Gonzalez, you can see that the box pressing process is done in rooms that, is, that are colder, less humidity, and therefore the cigars are staying so much more square in, in, the, in the square format. Um, yeah, so that was a learning we got from Arvo Synchro that we then applied on, on the on the Arv, uh, on the Arv, 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 Arv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and also the, the, it, it normally enhances the flavor a little bit, or it, it, it gives mm -hmm. it a bit more punch. Yes. Yeah, by taking that little little bit of fill leaf out. I think Tom had a question. Yeah. Hi again, Sam. Um, I'm just about to have the 2020 with a nice 2004 port that I got for my wedding anniversary for oh. my lovely wife. And um, it was about what you mentioned about the binder and the wrapper. I know the binder has a particular function, but particularly for how quickly the cigar will burn. How easy is it to interchange the binder and the wrapper or a binder and a wrapper leaf? Um, okay, so if you look at the blend, let's call it composition, your filler tobacco is always like your engine, like, like compared to like an engine of a car, you know, the filler is, is determining the strength, is determining the direction of, 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 the, of the taste where you want to go. The binder has, um, has an, an impact on the combustion, but has also an impact on flavors. So for example, we did once and test that we had the same cigar, uh, we just changed the wrapper on the cigar, and basically, it's I would say on the binder is can be up to thirty percent different taste. Now, if you change the wrapper, and uh, so for example, if you have an, an, a filler uh, 
filler tobaccos that are kind of, of great sacro, so very um, not too strong. A binder is not too strong. And you change the wrapper from being like a mild one to a strong one, your cigar is changing by 60% of taste. So this small leaf of the wrapper is incredibly um, um, uh, impactful on the blend. But again, it, it, I think it's like creating a cocktail. You have kind of a base. Is it vodka? Is it whiskey? Is it gin? And from there on, you add ingredients. So from there on, we add the binder to see. Sometimes the binder is also, um, let's say, if you have a stronger filler tobaccos, it's basically taming down the intensity or the strength of the tobaccos. And the same as the wrapper. If you look at the Habano Ecuador wrappers that we have, um, 702, for example, it gives a very nice creaminess and elegance to it and also bringing down the strength of tobacco a little bit. So they have different functions. And um, it's, it's really important that, that the binder and the wrapper is harmonizing with each other very, um, 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 how can I say, not only combustion-wise, um, but also flavor-wise. Imagine if you have a binder that is a little bit too thick, uh, then it's not burning very well. Your cigar will not burn even, like, like nicely and even. So it's very important that the, the leaves are not too thick, but are very thin and, and, and flavorful. And this is really like the main characteristics of binder and, and wrapper leaves. So in the um, Camacho Triple Maduro, is the mm -hmm. binder leaf the same as the wrapper leaf? Mm -hmm. mm. It's not exactly the same, but it's all Maduro tobacco. Maduro being, um, you can imagine, a little bit more oily, a little bit more thicker. And that was when we introduced um, Camacho, I had a long talk with, with um, Krishna Ayo about it. And he said it was never the challenge of the flavors, but it was really the challenge of the combustion. Okay. That was for them because the triple Maduro, and I believe it's the only triple Maduro in, in the world that every, every leaf is Maduro, it is really about the combustion. And um, so here again, very important is your degree of humidity on each tobacco. Filler tobaccos is around 12 to 14% of humidity. Binder leaves is around 18%. And then the wrap is between 23 and 25% of humidity because you need to stretch it more and it needs to be nice, shiny and, and, and nice looking for the eyes. And that was for the triple maduro. That was really the challenge. And, and, and he had many, many, many experience. But at the end, he, he got the right humidity of the leaves and, and therefore also the right uh, combustion of the cigar. Well, it packs a punch. And uh, yes. the box is beautiful for that cigar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a powerful box for a powerful cigar. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, it's a powerful. It's a powerful cigar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what you get with the with the, with the triple Maduro, I guess. You know. Yeah, especially Honduran tobacco, which already by nature is a bit more more uh, spicy uh, in, in, in taste, you know. And um, but I think it's, it's I really like after a nice meal, you know, or even even after a nice dessert, you know, we have a little bit this, the palate is a little bit sweetened by the dessert, and then a triple Maduro. I think it's very nice. Chocolate, a lot of chocolate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so we're yeah, looking at uh, some of the comments in, in the group chat. So we've got a lot of fans of the Synchro uh, in, in, in the house. So that's a, that's a good sign. So we did a good job on that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what can you uh, maybe tell us about the, um, the quality control for, for, for Avo and Davidov in general? You know, the, I know that's something which, which Davidov really prides itself on. So what, what is it that we do different than, than other companies? No, I mean, quality is for us, for us like, like one of the main, main, main focus points, you know. Um, when we left Cuba in 89 and we, we found a new home with, with Henke in Dominican, I mean, all this quality process already in place was just fantastic. And then being a Swiss company, I think quality is, is, is in the blood, you know. And if you look at watches, if you look at... Um, uh, at, at cars or whatever, anything you do, uh, quality is a very important aspect. And, and quality comes with also with precision. When I told you before, the 2019 blend has 11.25% of Peruvian tobacco. I mean, we go so much in this precision, in this detail of each tobacco to make sure that you have a great cigar at the end. And for us, quality, so if you look at, we have 170 process steps to craft one cigar, and there's a lot of, of quality steps in there. And um, so sometimes people are asking me like, okay, so why, 
are your cigars so expensive, you know? I can I, I tell them, I can do you easily a cigar for, for three pounds when I skip all the quality process, you know? Because actually the quality process is, of course, increasing labor costs, but at the end you have a perfect cigar that is drawing well, um, that you can really enjoy, and I think that is worth every penny. And um, I don't know why you had the experience when you have been in our, in our factory and you see all this process and then basically you sit in the bus with, with, with everybody and then you sometimes oh, you, heard, you hear a lot, wow, with all these process steps, 300 pairs of hands touching one cigar is actually not expensive. Um, if, because if, if you see it, so many people involved, you know, so many attention to detail and, and it's just fantastic, you know. What I always find fascinating is, is the way they um, they check the cigar at the end, you know, by, by, by feel, just by quickly feeling over the cigar and yes. they really pick up very quickly if, if one part of the cigar is underfilled. Yes, and so uh, yeah, exactly. So, but, but what you need to have in mind is each step of crafting a cigar is so important because, for example, if, if the, the agronomist is not harvesting the tobacco rightly, the tobacco is already not the same quality since the beginning. On the other side, if the cigar roller is not putting the strongest tobacco in the middle of your filler, but on the side, your burn will be uneven. So already he has huge um, um, responsibility to make sure that we enjoy the cigars correctly. And the same as you mentioned with, with um, about amount of tobacco, which we are always taking the weight of the cigars, where you can see if the weight is less, of course, there's missing tobacco, each cigar is checked again. And, um, and the cigar rollers are paid by the, by the number of, of, of cigars they are rolling, but not like rolling, rolling, but those who are passing the quality test. So they have all interest, you know, on focusing on quality to make sure they get more money than, than, um, than uh, producing a, a bad quality cigars. But our re rejection rate is under 1%, which is a very, very, very good rate uh, within the cigar industry. This is also that uh, a rolling pair gets a bonus if none of their cigars get rejected for the day. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's a very good thing. Um, and even after, um, you know, after the, the cigars are rejected by all the quality control processes, it goes to um, it goes to the labeling and, uh, and and boxing department. And even there, people can still reject the cigar if they feel it's not of yes. the right quality. So everybody has the right, especially supervisor, to reject the cigar at any time of the process. So imagine we have now since two years, we also confection the cigars in Dominican Republic because we were trusting them because we knew the expertise they have. Nevertheless, when the cigars are arriving to our warehouses, be it in Switzerland, Germany or, or, or US, we are checking 20% of, of each um, container coming in and 20% random checking. And if we see that there's one problem with, with any um, uh, uh, um, delivery, we check the cigars 100% again to make sure that each cigar is in perfect quality. And uh, that is just the, the attention and, and, the, and the, the efforts we're paying on, on, on quality. You know? And that's what makes us all very proud that uh, you know, every, every cigar is doing well, it's burning well, you have the, the perfect flavor stimulation, and, and that, that's just so important. I think Tom just asked a question, if we keep rollers and wrappers together as a pair for their whole career, for the people who do the filler and the binder and the, and the wrapper leaf. Ah, um, uh, sometimes they're changing, but mainly of the time they work together for, for long years, yes. And um, so they, they trust each other perfectly. And, um, and also, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because although they're rolling different formats, different blends, you know, they always have the expertise in which tobacco is placed, is placed in the middle of the filler, around the filler, how much tobacco you need to take, you know, and that's just amazing. Um, how do you how do have this, this, this in, it's really kind of in the blood. Um, I was once working in the factory on my, on my free I mean, my holiday time for two weeks in the, in the cigar rolling school and it is so difficult. I mean, my cigars look more like bananas than anything. And then to make sure, even if you have a round cigar and you say, okay, perfect, I did it. And you smoke the cigar and you say, oh, something is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's such, so difficult. 
it's quite funny when we take people to uh, to the cigar factory. Obviously, they get to roll their own cigars mm -hmm. as well. And um, you know, you look at it. They say, "Oh, yeah, it doesn't look that complicated." You know, the speed they do it, it's okay. You know, and they explain it to you, and then you have to do it yourself, and then. Mm -hmm. You get about corrected about twenty times yeah. <laughs> while you roll your cigar. So at least to make sure that it's it's smokable. Yeah, exactly. And then it's hot, it's humid. You know, you yeah, have, yeah, to yeah. Have, you have to have a lot of strength in your fingertips. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, then after this, you have respect uh, for their job. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get invited? It's the next question. Oh. <laughs> well, you have Roy there, you, so you, 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 you have to go and uh, work for Paul. And then, uh, if you're very nice to Paul, then he might uh, say, "Okay, we'll we'll send Karen along <laughs> next year." <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, to kind of get back to the to, to the rolling pairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, because yeah, they they really form a bond because you know, they they work together every day, and uh, sometimes uh, it comes like a second husband, second wife, uh, yeah. in, in many cases. Um, are there actually many, um, that you know of, many um, husband and wife rolling pairs? I don't know how many, but I know there are, there are a few. And um, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Aurora, she was once to, to Spain. And she told me, oh, but you know my husband, Freddy. I said, oh, Freddy's your husband. So I didn't know. So there are some, some, um, yeah. some married uh, couples that are working for us. And uh, I think it gives a nice like, family touch to the whole uh, process, yes. I think Tom had a question about uh, if we have a house style of folding the fillers, you know, you have the harmonica way or just the bunching. Uh, so what's the best way which, which style of uses? Um, so what we do is the accordion style. Accordion style, you have to imagine... Um, I don't have a paper here. Oh, yeah, there's a paper. So basically, you take your tobacco leaves and then basically you fold it like an accordion. And if you look at it, you have a lot more air channels and for example, the Cubans, the Cubans, they do entubado, <coughs> which means that they're rolling the leaf. Tubing, yeah. Show you this. So they're rolling it like, like, like a straw, you know, like this. And the problem is, if you have the tobacco leaves placed to each other like this, like round, and one is, is stuck together because of humidity or it's just like, you know, your draw is affected. And um, so you have to be very, very careful of the degree of humidity of your leaves when you do... Um, and tubado, and we are just better with the with the accordion style. We can work so much faster. Um, and um, we had in Honduras in our factory at the beginning they had the entubado uh, style, and they were uh, calculated uh, a day thirty percent less effective in crafting cigars versus accordion style. So that's why also accordion style is a little more effective, and you have better guarantee of a perfect draw. I think it kind of answered uh, Karen's question. So if it's better on the draw, well, yeah, in most yes. cases, I guess, yes, yeah. Yes. So why do you think it is that the, the Cubans stick to their the, the tubing and not the accordion? The stubbornness or history or? Yeah, I've, it's history. Uh, they, have been, they have been trained to do the, the, um, the entubado way. And uh, to change this way, it's, it's quite difficult for a cigar roller. We had this experience in Honduras. Um, there is a lot of trial and error, and I, I believe that the Cubans, they have this, the way they, they have been taught, and I don't think they will change this way of, of, of crafting the cigars, you know, although, yeah, as I say, you have to be very careful, that's why, um, recommendation-wise, when you store the Cuban cigars, maybe not so humid as Dominican cigars or Nicaraguan cigars, which you can store a little bit more humid, and, and, and maybe Cuban cigars, maybe a little 2 3% less of humidity to make sure that not one of the air channels is basically stuck to it uh, yeah, yeah. because of the humidity. Uh, one thing of Arvo cigars, which we haven't really talked about, is the, is the Puritos. <laughs> True. So what, what can you tell us about that? No, Puritos is, is I mean, we had the, uh, the classic Puritos. I remember we had the domain Puritos. Uh, we have now the single Puritos. Puritos is, is basically, we call it, it's a Petit Panetella format. Um, I think it's a 38 times 10, 4 inch. Uh, mm -hmm. It's handmade. It's handmade. Um, and being a medium filler is basically helping. So if, if you create a Purito, it's basically always inspired by your, by your um, um, long filler cigar. And then all the tobaccos that you, you're cutting off of the long filler cigars is assembled, cleaned, and then used in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Puritos. 
but I say it's, um, it's, it's a medium filler because you have also long tobacco leaves in it and also some short filler in it. Um, and, and, and I think for it is just perfectly if you have uh, not so much time for maybe a longer smoke, um, but still it, it's mainly the same aroma as, as a long filler cigars. It's easy to carry. You have the, the tin box and it's just doing well, yeah? So what's the main difference between rolling a long filler and a medium filler? Well, in terms of rolling, um, it's a little bit more delicate because of the short filler tobacco on, on, the, on, the, medium, on the medium filler. Um, I think it's not so difficult because you don't need to place the filler leaves according to the strength, you know, so you have a little bit more playground because it's, it's mainly short filler, it, it, it's, it's cut tobacco, you know. But it's, it's, it's the main, the most the challenge is to really fill it equally, the cigar, you know, that you don't have one part that is missing tobacco because of the short filler. And this is mainly challenge of the short filler uh, versus the long filler. Long filler is a little bit more about experience in, in terms of how many leaves you use, where you place the leaf uh, to make sure it has the right ring gauge. Um, and, and, and medium filler, is, they're, they're rolling it a little uh, quicker than, than the long filler cigars. So how many puritos would they make a day? Oh, that's a good question. I can tell you on the Robusto, when you work very well with your couple, you can do up to 500 a day. But on the puritos, I don't know, maybe 700, 750. Okay. It's quite a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a lot. I think it takes me about uh, <laughs> 10 minutes to, uh, to even attempt to roll a cigar. So Exactly. Better we enjoy the cigar then. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> And what was kind of the, uh, the idea behind, uh, behind creating the Puritos? Just for no, a, uh, a cheaper and, and, and short, maybe not cheaper, but a shorter uh, solution yeah. or quick it's smoke? A shorter exactly, a shorter solution, short enjoyment time. But also, if you look at the f f efficiency of a, of a, of a factory, uh, in terms of production-wise, um, like, 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 like in the kitchen, you know, if you have an, 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 um, um, your, 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 food, your food cost is so high, it's because you're not using all the, the, the food entirely, right? And the same when you have a factory of cigars, you know, the, the aim is to use also the tobacco that is maybe um, not used or that you cut off, you know, and you can reuse it. It's, it's, it's increasing your efficiency and, and also the prices are getting better because you can produce more cigars. So it, it's one point helping the factory to be more efficient in, in production and at the same time giving us a nice um, a little cigar if we have only like a 15 minutes uh, break. And um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's a great alternative, you know, especially when it comes to the, the winter month when it's a little bit more cold outside. And um, mm -hmm. Do rollers get trained? Because uh, I guess it's, it's a slightly different way of rolling. So they get trained to make puritos as well as long fillers? Or is there a dedicated team which only does puritos and the rest just does long fillers? Um, so with us, they start, they start rolling um, long filler and, and medium filler at the same time. And then basically they start with, with lower brands like private stock, um, bundles, you know, so they get Cusano. the feeling. Sorry? Cusano. Cusano, for example. You know, it's not that they're rolling bad. You know, it's just like, you know, we are more careful in there. And they, they, they have, let's say less responsibility in a way that, you know, if, if you roll a down, it has to be 100% perfect. I'm not saying that the Cousin is not perfect, you know, but, um, but you have more, um, how can I say, you're more, maybe it's a little bit less quality standards than for David of one. That's also why it's also for price a little bit less expensive. And then by the time to time, they get used to rolling cigars. They are increasing the experience, the expertise. They can go and start with Griffins, with Aro, with Sino Platinum. Um, Sino classic, and then only when they have like a huge expertise, and we're talking here about 10 years, then they can step up to be a, a David of cigar roller. And that's why if you go to the Galera of David of cigar rollers, they're all very proud, you know, that they, they roll cigars. And then the top, top uh, of the cigar rollers, they then craft the, the Perfecto format, Salomonas, uh, the Mafinas, you know, the very difficult formats to roll. So it's like basically like, like a career. Um, Russian, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Was also do I guess with the uh, well, the tobacco use for the Harvard office is probably more exclusive and then further aged, so it yes. kind of makes it therefore more more delicate and more expensive tobacco. So yes, for exactly. to handle that, they have to be uh, a bit more educated in that sense. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Um, does anybody have any more questions for uh, Sam?
then please let me know. Um, kind of going back to um, to 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 Arvo, um, maybe more the classic line and the XO line. So, what's the story behind those? No, those those, those have been basically the first lines that uh, we sold back in um, in uh, in eighty eight. You know, the the classic line being a very typical Dominican cigar, San Vicente, Olo, um, Piloto, you know, San Vicente gives you a little bit more the acid, a little bit more the sweetness, Piloto gives a little bit more the sweet and bitter stimulation, um, Olo has nice salty touch to it. So that's basically the typical Dominican tobaccos back at the time that we used. Um, and today, if you look at the tobaccos from Dominican Republic, you can do any kind of cigar, being a super strong um, very flavorful, you know, it's not anymore these mild cigars that some people still think is the case. And um, and for Arvo, it was always, um, the slogan back then was the perfect harmony. So it was really about the harmony in a cigar um, and the balance in a cigar, uh, it's stimulating all the taste buds equally at the same time. And that was basically the, the philosophy, the philosophy of, of Arvo cigars, you know. Um, then came Domain, adding a little bit more spiciness to it. Um, we had the signature line, even more stronger. Um, so we were experiencing a little bit with the strength, but always keeping a little bit the same origin tobaccos. That was the key with, with the Arvo brand. Um, and then came Cinco, where Cinco, we said, okay, let's think a little bit more out of the box, going to different tobacco origin, using Nicaragua tobacco, um, like the Ritmo from all over uh, Peru, uh, 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 Mexico, and, and, and trying something else, you know, like, like the Black Pillar for Davidoff. I think Tom wants to know a bit more about Zeno cigars, if you still have time. <laughs> yeah, a little bit time we have. No, Zeno cigars was, was basically inspired by, by Zeno Davidov at the time. Um, we wanted to create a line, um, let's say, that has been a little bit cheaper, made in Honduras, uh, because Zeno was uh, a lot of times in Honduras. I remember we did, in the 80s, we did... Um, the Mouton Cadet, you know, together with, with, the, with, the, with, yeah. the, with the wine house. We had this mystery tour, tour in the US. Um, it was just like a, a kind of already at this time, a different, um, let's say, taste stimulation that we wanted to create with, with, with the cigars. And Zeno being a little bit less expensive than, than, than Davidov. And then having also another target group that we were focusing on. And um, so today they're also uh, enrolled in Dominican Republic. And also, if you think about Zeno, there will be quite some news um, coming soon. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think we've done... Uh, are there any Mutonka that left? I don't uh, think uh, there are, no. I think if you're really lucky, you, know, you, you might find some somewhere, but I don't think there are in the UK any left. Uh, for sure. I mean, you, 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 uh, UK would be the market to look for, uh, because I know it's very much vintage. Uh, um, yeah. But I don't have any no. left. I think it may be Germany. You might have uh, some, Can some, be. Shop, some shop which, uh, Can be. which has some lost stock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we've, we've nearly done an hour and 50 minutes. So I think uh, it's been good going. Thank you for your time, Sam, as always. Yes, pleasure. Pleasure. Um, I think it's been very informative to find out more about about Arvo and uh, himself, but also about the brands and, and the blends we, we have of Arvo, and also a little bit about Zeno at the end, so that's, that's good. Um, next week, we'll, uh, we'll talk about Camacho with, uh, with George. Uh, George is the uh, brand ambassador for Camacho in the US, so nice. he's, uh, he's a fountain of knowledge, I guess. And we yes. talked about the Nicaragua Barrel Aged, um, and that's where the sample is available online. And it's the first time it came to the UK. It's a sample pack of three. It has a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo inside. And the, um, some of the filler tobacco is aged in Floricana rum barrels. Yes. Um, so I know we'll, uh, we'll have some, uh, some people probably on the line who, who work for Floricana. So maybe they can give us a little bit more info on, uh, on the rum uh, in the background, which could be quite interesting as well. Um, and we'll also get George to talk a little bit about uh, maybe the range we, we, we do have in the UK a little bit longer, the American barrel aged, uh, which is also aged in, uh, mm -hmm. in this case in, in bourbon barrels. Um, so yeah, next week, same time, six o'clock, um, samplers available online at cigars.com. Um, 
So thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your questions. And we hope to see you again next week. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks, Roy. Thanks, Sam. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Thank you, Paul. Bye-bye, <laughs> Tom, Karen, George, Midweek. See you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Tom. All right. Bye, guys.